Uh, good afternoon, and thank you for being here with us this afternoon, just a very few days away from the beginning of the Ocean Conference that we are all looking forward to. The Ocean Conference will be, indeed, a major global conference to spur action to restore the health of the ocean, and uh, it will go from next Monday, World Environment Day, until Friday, June the 9th, also including June the 8th, World Oceans Day. To kick off the conference, the city of New York is hosting the World Ocean Festival this coming Sunday. They will feature a parade of boats from the Hudson River to the East River and a festival with uh, thematic related to the sea on Governors, o Governors Island that is open to the public and in a very family-friendly atmosphere. Monday is also World Environment Day, so it's the best day to start this conference. And just to inform you that the Empire State Building will be lit up green for the occasion. There will be a short ceremony at 10 a.m. at the Empire State Building with Adrian Grenier, and a media advisory is available, I believe, in the table, or if not, online. So with this brief introduction, it is my honor and pleasure to have with us today, to brief on the conference, the President of the General Assembly, Peter Thompson, and the, Sec and the Secretary General of the conference, under Secretary General of the Department of Economic and Social Affairs, Wu Hon Bo. Mr. President, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, and thank you everybody for coming along. Yes, we're days away from the conference now, and uh, pretty exciting for us who've been working on this for the last two years. And um, here I really want to thank Mr. Wu, who right from uh, the word go has been a tower of strength for us with DESA in uh, getting uh, as to where we are. If you ask me, am I satisfied uh, with where we are? I'd say very much so. Uh, I would definitely, um, <clears throat> if I'd been told two years ago that we would be where we are today uh, with uh, over 1,600 uh, CSOs and NGOs registered to attend the conference. Uh, so I think, you know, you're already looking at about 4,000 people there coming. Um, uh, the, that's not counting all the IGOs, of course, all of whom uh, there's you know, 20 or 30 of them who are intimately involved in ocean affairs. Uh, there's now over 500 uh, voluntary commitments on the Ocean Conference website from governments and communities and uh, scientific institutions and so on. And I believe that number will, by the end of the conference, perhaps even double. My staff have been telling me not to say that for a long time now, but um, I've had a bet with them that we'll be up in three figures by the end of the conference in the voluntary commitments. And uh, we've got you know, more than 80 uh, high-level representatives coming from countries. Uh, of course, all 193 countries will be there, but uh, there's at least uh, 80 uh, heads of state, heads of government, ministers, vice ministers coming along. So, uh, yeah, I'd, if I was given this position uh, a year or so ago, I would take it with uh, both hands. Um, so, um, uh, what, are, what are we looking for from this conference? You know, it's, it's about making sure that SDG 14 has integrity. Uh, the, um, the targets of SDG 14 are ambitious, but they have to be, because the ocean is indeed trouble. Everything from marine pollution to uh, ocean acidification, ocean warming, deoxygenization. The fact that we're still proceeding down a path of pushing uh, fish stocks to points of ecological collapse. Uh, the fact that the high seas are still uh, piracy zones uh, and that we need to uh, give greater attention to uh, governance of the ocean. Um, all of these things and many more uh, are problems that humanity has put upon the ocean. It's not stuff that's been occurring naturally. Uh, all of these problems are created anthropogenically. And so it's for us to find the solutions to them. And uh, because they are problems that we've imposed, we can find the solutions. And that's what this conference is all about, making sure that SDG 14 is proceeding in a positive way to meet its targets and uh, get us where, to, where we want to be by the year 2030. 
remembering that there are way stations along the way. Uh, some of the targets of SDG 14 mature in 2020, some in 20, uh, one in 2025, and the others in 2030. So this is, uh, we are part of a process, we're on a journey to, uh, as I keep saying to you, and I, and I, uh, I have borrowed the words of the Global o Ocean Commission, some of you might remember their good work, where they talked about uh, the, the cycle of decline that humanity has put the ocean into. That was the conclusion of the many years of work of the Global Ocean Commission. Well, this ocean conference, uh, the, the, the high aim for this ocean conference is this will be the moment in history where we put that cycle of decline into reverse and start restoring the ocean's integrity. Uh, why is that so important to us? You know, every second breath you take is, comes from ocean-produced oxygen. Uh, without a healthy ocean, we're in deep trouble, whether it's food or whether it's our climate. Uh, we have to have that integrity for the ocean, the source of life. So I'm very happy to answer questions. Uh, I could talk on about this for hours and hours, as you know. It's my uh, favorite subject, the ocean. Uh, but uh, you'll get uh, greater detail by listening to Mr. Wu, so I'll pass it over to him, if I may, at this stage, and be happy to take questions. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. President. Ladies and gentlemen, warm welcome. It is just four days before we start the Ocean Conference. Um, the heads of states and government and over 3,200 representatives from the business and the scientific uh, community, civil society organizations, and of course from the UN system, together with the ocean uh, marine life experts and advocates from across the globe, will converge on the United Nations. As of yesterday, we, on our registration, as the President of the General Assembly said, the latest information is we have eight head of states, one vice president, seven prime ministers, one crown prince, two deputy prime ministers, 77 ministers, 15 vice ministers you will see the high-level participation of the uh, conference. Um, the PRs and also the senior representatives from the missions are not included because they've already had their the pass to the uh, venues in the UN compound, but they will be there. So all together, we, as the president explained, <coughs> we are going to have close to 5,000 participants. And they coming together for the first ever United Nations Ocean Conference, which will aim to mobilize urgent and tangible actions to improve the state of our ocean. I wish to first to express my deep gratitude to the governments of Fiji and Sweden for their tireless efforts in making this conference happen and their valuable guidance throughout the preparatory process. I would also like to express my deep appreciation to you, Mr. President of the General Assembly, and your dedication and your vision have been instrumental and essential in getting us to where we are today. This conference will co coincide with the World Environment Day on the 5th of June and the World Oceans Day on the 8th of June. This conference will explore how to achieve Sustainable Development Goal 14, which seeks to conserve 
and sustainable, sustainable use the oceans, seas, and the marine resources for sustainable development. Among other things, the conference will comprise prelim uh, the plenary meetings and the seven interactive uh, multi-stakeholder partnership dialogues, which will focus on the targets of SDG 4. These dialogues will aim to scale up and replicate existing successful initiatives, and they will launch new partnerships that will advance the implementation of a Goal 14. Although the conference is dedicated to supporting SDG 14, action on this goal will help in the implementation efforts of all 17 goals of the 2030 Agenda, as they are all interconnected. For example, healthy oceans directly contribute to poverty eradication, food security, health, clean water, renewable energy, sustainable livelihoods and decent work, economic growth, and climate regulation, just name a few. The conference will address such interlinkages. We expect three key outcomes from this conference. Number one, member states will adopt a call for action that is a concise, focused, and a concrete declaration to set the course towards a more sustainable future for oceans. Number two, a list of a voluntary commitments for the implementation of a Goal 14 gathered before and during the conference will be another key outcome. The commitments are initiative and uh, undertaken by anyone individually or by joint efforts in partnership. To date, as the president just said, over 500 voluntary commitments have been registered, covering all SDG 14 targets and all ocean basins. More than a third of these commitments are from governments. We expect more registration during the course of the conference before the 9th of June. Number three, the report of this conference, which will include co-chair's summary of the partnership <coughs> dialogues and a list of a voluntary commitments. The conference will also feature more than 150 side events, 31 exhibitions, and SDG Median Zone <coughs> with the live interviews and discussions. There will be a diverse mix of high-level officials, experts, celebrities, and other ocean advocates. Please have a look at the conference website at oceanconference.un.org for further information. Thank you very much. I'm ready for any questions. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Wu. And now the President of the General Assembly and the Secretary General of the conference are ready for your questions. Please, Madam. Hello, my name is Shauna McGee from Kyoto News and on behalf of the United Nations Correspondents Association, thank you so much for hosting this. 
I can feel there's a lot of excitement and passion coming from the panel today, but what do you see as the biggest challenge or sticking point in the upcoming conference in dealing with the SDG 14 and how you would like to see it going forward? And if I may, a second question on the call for action. There's a portion in it that, uh, that outlines discussions about destructive fishing practices and ending illegal and underreported uh, unregulated fishing. Could you address that and how that can be implemented? Thank you so much. Um, yeah, look, I, I expect there to be hundreds upon hundreds of good ideas coming out of this conference that we're going to have to capture and take forward and make into a, into a work plan for us all to be involved in. When I say all of us, I don't just mean the United Nations or the United Nations system. I mean all of us. That is the whole purpose of going out with the, the, the voluntary commitments, basically crowdsourcing to the world, mm -hmm. saying uh, we're all in this together. We've got to uh, reverse that cycle of decline that the ocean's in. How, how are we going to do it? So th the idea is to, to, to get the best solutions, and we're doing that through the partnership dialogues. We're doing that through the, uh, the uh, Register of Voluntary Commitments, and it's already there in the negotiated call for action. Good, solid things for us to go forward and doing. Are there problems? Yes, of course there are problems. Whenever you get human beings or, or, or nations together, there are going to be disagreements. You know, we've got disagreements on uh, things like fisheries subsidies, on uh, what to do about um, uh, marine pollution. But, but you know, we, we work towards the, the consensus that is best for the common good. That's the way the multilateral system works. Um, and uh, there will be speed bumps for sure. But uh, let's get the, the wheels turning on SDG 14. That's the whole uh, idea of it. And now on, on illegal, unreported fisheries, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of work being done at the WTO on this in relation to fisheries subsidies being withdrawn from uh, the activities that support IUU. Uh, there's going to be a lot of work being uh, done during the conference, during the partnership dialogue on fish stocks around how we can uh, better uh, police IUU fishing. I mean, we've got satellites, we've got drones being talked about, we, uh, we've got the port states measure from FAO coming into existence. These are all aimed at IUU fishing. So I think you'll find that there'll be uh, lots of good ideas coming out of the conference on, on that particular subject, IUU. If I may, I just want to add two points. The President of the General Assembly has uh, covered the area very nicely. Uh, first point is that uh, it is very important for the conference to raise the awareness of the international community about the importance of ocean seas and the sustainable use of, of the marine resources. And, and secondly, and they should work together because nobody alone can deal with the issue. And secondly, uh, the, as the President of the General Assembly identifies some uh, issues which are really uh, rather tough to, to handle. However, the message I would like to pass here, that the member states, under the guidance of, to of the two co-facilitators and under the guidance of the President of the General Assembly, they have reached consensus on the final text and uh, in the text, there will be uh, 22 specific actions to take. So um, although we have a lot of challenges, but we do equally have good opportunities. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Waldo, Prensa Latina. Can you be more uh, specific on what are those uh, commitments that you already received? It's money, it's support for uh, less developed countries, what they are? Uh, look, uh, what I'd advise you to do there is go to the website. There's over 500 of them. They, 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 our aim with the Register of Voluntary Commitments is to make sure that all of the targets are comprehensively covered. So if it's talking about something like marine pollution, uh, do the math. I haven't done it yet, but you'll find there is comprehensive coverage on marine pollution. If it's on something like uh, as, uh, ocean acidification, again, go there and do the count. We're, we're obviously going to do the count at the end of the conference to to uh, see um, you know, what all the areas covered are. But I, already there is comprehensive coverage uh, in that area. Uh, the call for action is also very comprehensive in terms of covering all the targets of SDG 14. So 
uh, I'd have a look at both those uh, documents in answer to your question. Uh, Matthew Lee, Inner City Press, on behalf of the Free UN Coalition for Access, thanks a lot for the, for the briefing and for the ones next week as well. I wanted to ask, yesterday I'd asked the, the, the ambassadors that were here also about the conference about the, these fishing subsidies. And I just, from their answer, they seem to say that, that the, the idea is that it, 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 it hurts smaller countries, fishing industries, to have large, I know there's, a Euro, there's an EU fund that, that subsidizes fisheries. Is that, the main, is that the main concern about these fishing subsidies, or is it that they... In lead to lead to overfishing, you know that they increase the capacity of these large companies, leading to just uh, an overall loss loss of fish. Or are these two? I guess what I'm asking you to say is, are these two critiques of them related, or could they be could they be separate? Is it is it really just a matter of the big versus the small, or is it a concern about the number of fish left in the sea? Uh, so if I may, Mr. Wilson, thank you. Um, the um, First of all, I, I just predicate that my answer by saying that there is going to be this World Trade Organization uh, ministerial meeting in Buenos Aires in December where this subject of fisheries subsidies uh, it comes up and where decisions will be made uh, in terms of the WTO mandate to decide on things like subsidies. So, um, you know, what, and what we're trying to do out of the conference, of course, is put some positive wind in the sails from here down to Buenos Aires in December. Uh, but having said that, and without prejudging in any way what those uh, ministers of ours will decide in Buenos Aires, the whole area of uh, fisheries subsidies, and there's, there's strong language on fisheries subsidies, of course, in <laughs> SDG 14, and I refer you to that, is, uh, is that subsidies do uh, quite a range of things in terms of distorting what's happening out there in the ocean. One is that it, uh, you know, it, it helps IUU fishing. Uh, there, is a, there are actually uh, IUU uh, fishing boats that are, that are subsidized, and which seems absurd that we would, uh, that governments would allow activities that um, subsidize illegal fishing. So that's, that's one obvious area. The second obvious area is that uh, a lot of these subsidized fishing fleets are uh, exploiting fish resources which are either over the tipping point or are approaching the tip tipping point of sustainability. So you know, what is the human rationality of us continuing to see these boats out there uh, exploiting a ever diminishing stock? So you know, if we're going to be managing our, um, our ocean resources sustainably, which is what SDG 14 calls for, I remind you, it's you know, conserve and sustainably manage the ocean's resources then you know, fisheries subsidies is an obvious area uh, on which we've got to take remedial action. Thank you. My name is Sato from Japanese NHK. Uh, as uh, Mr. Wu said, the, the ocean conference is ready to the, the climate change, and we are now focused on the, uh, whether the Trump administration we will disgrade the effort to uh, climate change or not. Uh, do you have any message to the U.S. administration? And what do you expect the U.S. Uh, commitment on this conference? Thank you. Well, thank you very much for the question. Um, ocean does have impact on climate. Climate change does have adverse effect on oceans. You just see the r responses and reactions from the six countries, you know how serious the adverse effect on those countries, um, on the people on the islands. As far as the uh, United States government's uh, approach towards the climate change is concerned, I would not at this uh, stage to jump the gun to prejudge what will come out perhaps later today. I, I would just like to make some general observations. The climate change is undeniable fact. The climate change actions taken by the international community is unstoppable. So um, I would see that the international community and the most of the countries who are the uh, parties to the Paris 
agreement will continue their efforts to combat the climate change and its uh, adverse effects. I'm really optimistic about this. Thank you. If I may just add to that, um, you know, I think all of us, all human beings, certainly in my case, we're selfish uh, and uh, we, we're also altruistic. And uh, in my case, you know, I'm very selfish about the future of my grandchildren. Uh, I love them dearly. And uh, I'm also altruistic because I recognize that there's strength in numbers and you've all got children or one day we'll have grandchildren as well. Uh, so, you know, when we look at the world today and say what kind of world are we giving our children and our grandchildren, uh, it, we're, we're kind of on the cusp, I'd say. Uh, you know, I remember reading a book by the top uh, scientists of Britain who said that our species has about a 50-50 chance of uh, getting through this century without, um, so Martin Reefs that was, uh, without uh, having, uh, you know, absolute catastrophe. Uh, so. We're on that cusp, uh, but we've done the responsible thing. The, the good news is, back in 2015, we did the responsible thing for the generations to come. And that was the putting in place the 2030 Sustainable Development Agenda, of which SDG 14 is a part, uh, saving the ocean. And we put in place the Paris Climate Agreement. With those two agreements, implementing those, our grandchildren have a secure future. Without implementation of those, they're in trouble. And then uh, on the, the, the ocean conference, you know, ocean action and climate action, uh, two sides of the same coin. You just cannot separate them, and I won't go into that, but they, they're inseparable. So, uh, you know, whatever the US government decides today, the good news is that the great mass of humanity, uh, including uh, American citizens, by, by indications of the polls, uh, and the great mass of international governments are committed to these two great agreements that we will put in place in 2015 and which are the only way that we can have some confidence about the security of our grandchildren. So I think, you know, selfishness and altruism uh, you know, will win through. Thank you. <clears throat> Hi, uh, Margaret Bashir, Voice of America. If uh, could you just touch a bit on the pollution aspect and the plastics in the oceans, and talk a bit about which countries are struggling the most with it? The I don't, I don't want to say biggest polluters, but the ones that are having the biggest problem with it. And also, you've, uh, we've heard a lot in the last couple of days about the problems plaguing the Pacific Ocean in terms of tuna and coral bleaching and things like that, but we haven't heard too much about the other oceans. If you might be able to touch on some of the dangers that the other oceans are facing. Sure. Well, I, I don't want to prejudge what's going to be said at the conference next week because you're going to get uh, so much information in answer to those sort of questions. But, uh, you know, I don't need to give you the, the, the headline stats either. You've, you've seen them all so many times now. The fact that the ocean will have more plastic in it than fish by the year 2050. The fact that we tip a garbage load of plastic into the ocean every minute of every day. You know, those sort of stats, you've seen them all before, but they're all true. Uh, and uh, we, uh, and I'm sure you saw those pictures of Henderson Island the other day, where the most remote island in the world, and its just beaches are just covered in trash. Uh, that's uh, just a... Uh, it's such a disappointing thing that the humanity has done that to the ocean. Uh, but uh, we're going to correct it. That's what, the, the, that's what we're setting out to do next week. So marine pollution, plastics. But remember that plastics are a lot more complicated than what you see. Microplastics are a huge part of the problem. And that's the cosmetics industry, the beauty industry. It's also the fashion industry. Because if you're not using organic products, you, you're probably putting uh, microplastics into the ocean through what you're wearing as well. Uh, so it's a complex problem, and we, we have a whole partnership dialogue with global authorities coming along to talk on that on uh, Monday, I think, is the Marine Pollution uh, Partnership Dialogue, where you're going to hear really good solutions on this. And for me, personally, part of it is to say to the fashion industry and to the cosmetic and beauty industry, uh, hey, time to, uh, like, uh, you know, front up and be honest. Tell us whether you're using ma microplastics or not. Because if you are, I'm not going to buy your product anymore. Uh, if you're not, uh, you know, I'll go to yours. Uh, so uh, th this is a moment of honesty for all, all of us uh, in terms of the uh, plastic pollution. 
I just want to add one point. Maybe it's interesting to you. If you look at the name of the conference, it's Ocean Conference. It's not oceans or seas. It's not in the plural form. Well, from our point of view, um, the a massive body of water in the globe covers 70% of the global sur surface. And if you drop a plastic bottle anywhere near your sea, it may end up in some other places. So all these seas notions are connected. So regional or individual action seems very weak. We need the global solutions to the global challenge. Thank you. Because we've heard about the challenges, for instance, yesterday, the Micronesian ambassador was talking about um, El Nino who affecting the tuna in the Pacific. Does that happen in the Atlantic too? I mean, are there some issues that are specific to areas that need different solutions for those regions? Well, sure, surely there will be different uh, situation, uh, different challenges. That's why um, the, the call for action document draft um, will contain 22 specific actions that will be designed to the specific challenges. I will not prejudge uh, any actions because they have not been adopted by member states as yet. Thank you. But just an answer to your, uh, your question about the regionality. Yeah, this is happening all around the world. I mean, the, the, the giant plastic soups, the gyres, as they're called, that are out there in the middle of the ocean circulating. There's one in the North Pacific, one in the South Pacific, one in the North Atlantic, one in the South Atlantic, and one in the Indian Ocean. So plastic's everywhere. It's even found in the bottom of the Mariana Trench. It's found in Antarctica and Arctic. Right? It's everywhere now. So, uh, yeah, this is a shared problem. And if you're exploiting fish stocks, uh, you know, it doesn't matter whether it's in the Indian Ocean or the Pacific Ocean. Exploiting fish stocks is, is exactly that, and it's happening all around the world. So, um, yeah, we're, we're going to get the solutions next week. Uh, thank you. It was a follow-up to the last question on plastics, and you've answered some of it, but... Uh, Can you please introduce yourself? Oh, I'm sorry. It's Pamela Falk I from CBS that. News. Just in case. I'm in case. No, no, I appreciate it. I, the uh, uh, president of the General Assembly, um, you said that this would be the moment in history to reverse that cycle of decline. There was some, and Mr. Wu, uh, Undersecretary Wu, there was some uh, talk in the early moments of this planning of this conference that there would be a naming names. I mean, as you said, uh, and what we've seen is 60% of all the plastics and pollution are from five countries, that there would be some uh, one of the outcome doc uh, outcomes pieces uh, that there would be some report on the biggest polluters, and that didn't come out in the end. You said you hope to hear that next week. What do you hope to hear, that, that countries that are the biggest polluters, and we know who they are, uh, will be called out? Um, how do you see this reversing a decline other than uh, general sense of uh, getting information out about it. And then the final thing is just on the voluntary contributions. What's your, um, in the 500 that have been listed thus far, do you see any gaps? Thank you. Uh, I don't see gaps uh, very quickly on that one. But as far as the country, uh, there's no hiding the fact, and, and China's uh, been very clear that they uh, have been the number one in terms of marine pollution, and that Indonesia is the second, and they've been very upfront on that as well. So both of them are coming to the conference with, uh, with solutions to that. I was in China very recently. I met with the State uh, Oceanographic uh, Authority, SOA, and uh, they're coming uh, strongly to the conference, and they, uh, they've, they've got um, uh, very strong ideas on how to control uh, marine pollution. And in Indonesia's case, I've met with the ministers who are coming, I uh, met them in Bali, and uh, you'll see that they have already made voluntary commitments on marine pollution, if you have a look at the uh, register. Uh, why is Indonesia acting on it? Again, you know, selfishness and altruism is what we operate by, right? they are seeing that marine pollution is starting to hurt their tourist industry. And uh, so the Indonesian government now is instituting laws uh, which are going to stop plastic uh, getting into it because, uh, you know, it's going to affect jobs on the land in the hotel industry if, if beaches are just full of plastic and the sea's full of plastic. 
So, uh, yeah, no, I don't think there's any lack of honesty. I would like to see more honesty in, in the microplastics area. That's because, you know, that's uh, what's ending up on our dinner plates. The, the big plastics on the beach uh, uh, are nasty things to look at, sure. Uh, but you don't see the plastic that is ending up on your dinner plate. I've been up the Woods Hole Institute in Massachusetts recently. I've seen film that the Woods Hole have done out in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean of microplastics being devoured by phytoplankton. They've, they're, they're, they're that good up there. Uh, they know how to do that. Uh, but that's happening as we speak. There's thousands and thousands of these microplastics um, being devoured by phytoplankton. Where's the phytoplankton going? It's being eaten by bigger fish, bigger fish, ending up eventually on your dinner plate. So what's that going to do to humanity? Uh, it can't be good. Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you for this briefing. Um, I am from Bangladesh, and the country is the most vulnerable for the climate change. And the scientists, they agreed that by the 2050, rise, rising sea level will indicate, indicate from the 17% of the land and displace about 80 million people. So what will be the focus, like country like Bangladesh, the most vulnerable for the climate change, and those Bangladesh is not responsible for this. The big countries, they are the responsible for the pollution. So what will be the focus to rescue Bangladesh for the most vulnerable situation? What will be your focus on this conference? Um, one of the big things about this conference is not going to be a conference of finger pointing. We're all in this together. Uh, all of us have contributed to the problem that's out there. Uh, marine pollution overfishing, uh, ocean acidification, all of us. And anybody who drives a car is contributing to ocean acidification. So we're all in this together. So it's not a case of uh, you know, finger pointing. Uh, what, what we're looking for is solutions from everybody. And uh, th there is provision, as you know, in SDG 14 for special help for LDCs. Bangladesh is an LDC and for SIDS. So there will be a special concentration on L LDCs and SIDS. Uh, rising sea levels, yeah, it's a problem which, uh, you know, Florida faces it as well, you know, that's a developed country. But th this again, rising sea levels is universal problem unless you're landlocked. So let's get to the universality of this, uh, uh, of what we've done to the ocean and uh, what we're going to do to fix it. So, um, you know, what I would uh, say on rising sea levels, it's, you know, it is a tragedy for places like Bangladesh, but we have to find the solutions, and, and Bangladesh is being very proactive in that regard. Uh, but, um, you know, we're going to have to do this together, and uh, uh, it's why I said to you before that climate action and ocean action are the same, side, uh, same coin, just different sides. Uh, because what is rising sea level about? It's about greenhouse gases, it's about CO2. Uh, uh, it's about human activity putting too much CO2 in the atmosphere. That's what ocean acidification is. That's what ocean warming is. What happens when the ocean warms? It's got nowhere to go but up, right? So it's about climate action. Uh, both sea level rise uh, and ocean acidification are both about staying true to the Paris Climate Agreement. We have to write very quick. Is there any chance you could say something about the bees? Are they in the building yet? Bees. The good news about the bees, this is SDG 15, biodiversity, right? right? The bees, there are 150,000 not in the building, down at the far end of the uh, of North Lawn, in those that copse of trees down at the end there, there are now three beehives with 150,000 bees. It's going to go up to about a quarter of a million bees. Those three swarms will produce about a quarter million bees. They are um, the refugee bees. <laughs> they, they were The swarms were captured, I think, in Brooklyn and Connecticut and uh, somewhere else. Uh, bees without a home. Uh, there's an organization called Bees Without Borders that uh, captured them and have brought them here to the UN and put them in our three UN beehives. 
Uh, we've been laggards here in New York, by the way. Uh, the UN uh, headquarters in, um, in Nairobi and in Geneva have had beehives for a long time. But anyway, uh, SDG 15, biodiversity, bees, what could be more fundamental than that? Yeah, and the honey gets produced and will be available for purchase in the uh, gift shop. <laughs> So, thank you. Our thanks go to the President of the General Assembly and to Under Secretary General Wu. Our la so uh, that's it for today. We will be seeing you very soon, and we wish you all a very successful, interesting uh, Oceans Conference. Thank you. Well, okay. Thank you.